Alright, hey guys. I'm gonna talk about why Infinite Crisis failed. If you hear my fan or the worksmith working, I'm sorry, I live near an armory. So anyways, let's get it let's get a let's make a quick video of why it failed. Alright. I don't know. Where should we start? I guess we should start with why it sucked in the beginning. Um even it, though it took three years to develop, the game was pretty much garbage. It was buggy and they never hotfixed anything. I mean the actual combat it had input lag, which is something you never want in a multi-million dollar game. The noise bug was awful. I think it lasted for two months. Basically every time you played a match, there was like a quick chance that your game wouldn't put out any audio, so you'd just be playing a game and no actual audio would be coming out. And it'd be really, really, really annoying. And you had to restart the entire client just to get it to work again. Now let's talk about the community. The community was okay. I mean, it's about the same in every MOBA. You're going to have your shit talkers and your AFKers. AFKers were a huge problem. And so were shit talkers, I guess. But the shit talkers were mostly done by the professionals. These people, you could not play with them at all. Well, at least most of them. The entire pro scene was just shit talk any new player if you didn't know how to play. They wouldn't bother to teach you how to play or what to build. It was just fucking awful. And the worst part was that they were pretty much immune to turbine banning them. I don't know why, but a lot of them would be racist or say freaking disgusting things. I think at one point they made some streamer cry on the stream and they still weren't banned. Or I think they were banned for like a week. But they went to this tournament and they played on someone else's account. I don't know how they didn't catch that, but yep, that happened. That was awful. Another thing was the actual gameplay was subpar. It was like if League and Dota had a baby and all that came out was some mobile piece of crap. It was completely awful. The graphics were shit, even though it was pretty demanding on your computer. I could not get that game to get past the freaking minimum requirements at 30 FPS even though I could play League on medium 60 frames and Dota to the same. Basically I would I recommended it to a couple friends and they all had the same problem. If you have a garbage computer you can't run that MOBA. So there was actually very little reason to stay on that. Another thing to note were that the champions were pretty, eh, they're, they're your average MOBA champions by now, you know. Every MOBA is going to copy off champions and their skill sets, and after a while you just can relate, hey, Catwoman is like Talon and someone else had a baby. So nothing really special there. I mean, I, I love the Atomic Wonder Woman, but there was just... There's just very little special things about her. She was overpowered, by the way. And what else? Okay, the marketing for that game completely fucking sucked dick. I cannot stress enough how bad the marketing was for that game. That marketing, wow. Just completely awful. And for example, you could probably buy like, what was it, a $50 code on? What was it, eBay, Amazon? And that would save you a lot of the spending money, you know? You'd start off the game with, it only costs about like less than $3, and you'd have $50 worth of credits on there, that's pretty good. You got it through like graphics cards and stuff, people purchased it, and then they got the code and they were like, what do I do with this, so they just decided to sell it. I got one, three bucks, and then I bought, what's it called, Shazam Infinite Crisis, no, no. Pax. Pax Shazam. It, it costs like a dollar. You know? But overall, it wasn't worth it because the game closed, but you know, it's just. There was no reason to buy anything in the game because they pretty much gave you everything for free. I really liked the login bonuses, but after a while, they needed to change it or they needed to add new um, bonuses or something. Like maybe a credit. I think one of the main reasons it failed to retain people was because it, it just wasn't that different than the other MOBA. It really just focused on it being a DC MOBA and honestly, that's more for super casual players. 
for people who want to be good at any game, I don't think just having a subpar game would be enough. You gotta be willing to actually say, hey, this, this game is gonna go places that it didn't look like Infinite Crush was going anywhere but the dumb thing. I don't know, and a lot of people were blaming Warner Brothers for approving it, but honestly, I don't, I don't think it was Warner Brothers. If you look at it from a business standpoint, they were throwing millions of dollars into Infinite Crisis and they weren't getting anything back. I would have probably dumped their ass sooner. I mean, I know about the layoffs and that sometimes they control the direction of the game, but come on, like... If I was throwing millions of dollars at a company to build me a game, and I play that shit and I see how awful it is, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna probably stop paying them and want them to just cancel it because it was awful. Don't even get me started on the Coast City map. That Coast City map was just horrible to play on as a well, considering I've been playing on the three late map for like four years. But anyways, that's not the point. The point is that the map I don't think it was that different. It was just in favor of the purple side, I think. But there was just very little special to it. I mean, the Doomsday was nice, the Doomsday device, that was always fun. It really added a good dynamic to the game, but other than that, it just didn't change much. Or anything that mattered, enough to the point where I could say, hey, I like this game better than League or Dota. I mean, I think Dota is on its way to be the best one, I mean, it, it obviously has the most stuff and better quality, what's it called, quality gameplay and all that with the, with the recent update, but I don't know. When you say that it's hard to get into the most, I don't believe that. I mean, sure it's getting difficult, but of course it's going to be difficult. When you build a game that is shit, at least have a decent game. Okay, for example, I already talked about my graphics card and all that, but if I can play League on 60 frames per second on medium and the same for Dota, why the fuck would I go to Infinite Crisis where I can't run it on the lowest settings at 30 frames per second? I brought that up multiple times, but with the September update, I think, they, they gave me like an extra 10 frames, so I was at 40%, 40 frames per second, but it was still like yes. It's, all my friends stopped playing because of that. I live in a really poor area, so money, dumping money on a computer wasn't exactly you know, available at the time. And besides, League just with the graphics update, it just seemed a lot more better. And then I think the final down in the coffin is when Heroes of the Storm got released. That just which was around the same time. I think it was in the exact same day they, they said that they were canceling it. The but honestly, before that, once they released it, they tried to release Rank, they still didn't have a match history, which is really fucking awful. Three years and no match history. Fucking kidding me. But anyways, once Heroes of the Storm was released, it was around the same time they announced that they were closing, but Rank Ranked was released just so that they could try to get more players to play the game, honestly. It was the most awful system I've seen for it. There was no point in being bronze, since losing in bronze doesn't demote you. Really dumb. If I could have recommended one thing to Turbine, it was... Focus more on the actual gameplay and marketing. Instead of, you know, whatever the fuck they were doing, trying to advertise um, the professional scene, which, when their professional scene was garbage. Utter garbage. I, I look at being professional in Infinite Crisis the same as being a fork straightener, you know? Those people who straighten forks for a living. I don't consider them a real thing. Well, I mean, they do make money, but you know. It's like a business that no one wants to get into. You tell someone you're a professional Infinite Crisis player, they'll look at you like, what the fuck is Infinite Crisis? 
And why are you doing that? Get a real job. I'm about to gank this bot lane. I don't like their bot lane. Alright, I actually did something. I was scared I wouldn't do anything. So anyways, yeah. So the people who are saying the lane Warner Brother is just fucking ridiculous, Warner Brother. If anything, Warner Brother was, was the people who put Turbine and the game out of their misery. Like, let's say... Let's say Infinite Crisis was a little boy, terminally ill, and Warner Brothers the dad providing the money for it, all the operations, and Turbine is a shitty ass mother who doesn't want to let her son go, even though he's in pain, suffering, and dying. And every day they're losing less and less players, they're losing less and less chance to survive. Warner Brothers just wanted to put the game out of its misery, but Turbine and the players kept wanting it alive, even though it was dead at that point. On release it had about 7,000 players on the Steam charts and maybe like maybe twice as much on maybe twice as much on the original client but honestly even if it had 15,000 players every day it wouldn't be right. It wouldn't lose them. They just cannot retain players. There's no reason to stay playing Infinite Crisis. It's sad but true. I'll make a better video later. Oh shit, they got this. I'll make a better video later. But for now, that's all. I guess they love it. I mean, the game really wasn't that great. I'm sorry if you think it was, but it just wasn't. There's a reason it closed. And it's not just because 